I promise you guys, holding this camera holds me back. <laughs> I can't get as much stuff done as quickly, and we've got a lot of stuff to get done. But let me go ahead and show you where we're at right now, uh, just so that you know that your boy is out here grinding, is out here working. I'm just not videoing everything. So right here, I went ahead and put the bung in for the wide band. I had this bung that came with uh, this wide band for the Calypso and I, I never used it because we did away with the L2 sensors. So I just screwed it in to the old spot. Well, on this car, uh, we're gonna actually just use this for reference. It's not gonna be hooked up to the computer. The computer's not gonna be making changes due to this. So it needs its separate bung right here. So anyway, we got that done. It's not all hooked up yet. Actually, only thing it is is just run up there like that. And then we had to come back here and put this fuel pump in because the stock fuel pump just isn't gonna cut it, not even close. So we're gonna be running a 340 pump in here. Everything is pulled down. I've got the pump out. And I've already done the majority of the work. So here's the pump. This thing had a new cage in it. So somebody had put this in there. I don't remember doing it. This is the old on three performance 340 pump that came with my turbo kit for the Calypso. So we went ahead and just modified everything, put this new pump in, and we should be good. This should be plenty of fuel for what we need to do. Now, Neo's gonna get on to me about this, but I'm not doing the fuel pump wiring upgrade. At some point, I probably will, but just not right now, guys. We got too much stuff to do, so check out all the stuff that we still have to do here. So we're gonna have to install the quarter horse. So we gotta do that. And you have to modify your computer cover. The cage around the computer has to be modified just to do this. We have a new ACT, ECT sensor right here for both. Of course, we have to have a boost gauge. All that's gotta be hooked up. We have to put the gauge pod in, which I do not like gauge pods, but it's, it's what it is. I mean, you gotta have it. So we got all this stuff to do. And then we have this mess that I pulled out of the Calypso because we don't really need it anymore. We could use it for reference, but I'm just gonna go ahead, pull it out and put it in here. And we'll do something different with the Calypso later on. We may put the Holly Dash in the Calypso uh, at some point next year so we can monitor everything straight from there. Plus we also, right now we have the screen, so I can just use the screen, the little handheld to monitor air fuel and all that. So uh, we don't really need this in the Calypso. I'm actually gonna go back to uh, one gauge pod right here. Here it is. So in the Calypso, we're actually only gonna be running this one pod right here, and that's gonna be for boost reference. This is what I've been up to uh, the past few days. As you all know, we now have 373 gears in the car, and I drove it and was <laughs> kinda, kinda disappointed. I mean, it made a little bit of a difference, but not as much as I thought. And that's weird to me because Every time I've ever put gears in a car, especially coming from a 273 to say like a 373 has made a huge difference. But in this car, not so much. And, and I don't know why that is. I think we have an issue um, with the Retro Fox. Something doesn't let this car perform the way I feel like it needs to. And it could literally be a clogged up fuel filter or something like that. Now, once we get the wide band in here and get it hooked up, I'm going to go ahead and drive the car before we do the supercharger. So I don't know if this thing is running lean or rich, whatever the case may be. So that's going to be a good thing. But anyway, that's where we're at right now. And uh, I'll just pick back up with you guys either later on today or in a couple of days when I get more work done and let you know how everything's going. I will start the car up, fire it up with the new pump, make sure everything's good and probably run down to the auto parts store and get a new fuel filter because we need to go ahead and do that as well. But uh, outside of that, that's what I'm doing today. So. I'm not even going to do a time lapse. I'm not going to do any of that because it's literally going to look like the last time lapse you saw with me under the car doing the uh, rear end stuff. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead, get to work. I'll pick up with you guys a little bit later on. All right, we got the 340 pump in. Let's make sure everything is going to work. We'll go ahead and start this thing up. It should work. I don't see why it wouldn't, but you never know. Here's the pump. There we go. Yes, sir, that's what I'm talking about. Nice. All right. You gotta shake it. 
all day. I know you guys get tired of the, probably the exhaust videos and the cam videos. I love it though. It just sounds so good. And each car sounds good in its own way. Whether it's got turn downs, whether it's got tailpipes, it's all sound unique. that's gonna be that I'm gonna go get a new fuel filter because I forgot to do that so I need to go ahead and do that now uh, or actually I may wait on that because I really need to get some of this stuff done as far as the gauge pod set up at least get the wide band well I guess both gauges go ahead put both gauges in the pod get them up there and start the wiring process this actually should be pretty easy more than likely it'll be either later on tonight or sometime tomorrow before i pick back up with you guys on it sorry i know you guys love the how-to videos but i can't always do them sometimes you're just limited on time and you got to get some work done so i'll go over anything that i can think of to help you guys out um, i can't think of anything with the fuel pump that was pretty cut and dry so pick back up with you guys here pretty soon and just like that we have our gauges finally and everything is wired up guys i'm not a big fan of gauges um but that doesn't look too bad there i was actually going to change this out for the white gauge to better match that but i decided to go ahead and leave it it's fine but everything like i said is hooked up and ready to go so the retro is ready for boost pretty much we have the 340 pump in the car now uh car seems to be running fine so everything is good we have our exhaust on this is the type of stuff that i don't like doing at all but it's part of it so i want to remind you guys let's say you have an upcoming project similar to that uh something like a supercharger or heads cam intake type install is a pretty big deal it takes a lot of time so if there's anything you can do to set yourself up for success, I suggest you go ahead and do that. Like I said, we pretty much got everything done that we needed to do. Now, a lot of this stuff up here, obviously, is going to have to come off. I think you guys already know I have a surprise for you up here on that. It's going to be awesome. The biggest thing is just staying motivated and getting out here, getting work done. Now, this today didn't cost me a dime. You know, I already had the pump. I already had my uh, gears already had the tailpipes already had the gauge like the only thing that i didn't have was the boost gauge and uh it was just nice to get out here and not have to spend a lot of money you know just use old parts that i had or whatever the case may be i understand that not everybody has used parts laying around but the point is is to get out there and get ahead of any issues that you're going to run into more than likely we still got a lot of work ahead of us but at least now we have the wide band in the car so we can monitor air fuel we have our boost gauge in. Those are the little things that nobody wants to do, right? Everybody's cool with heads, cam, intake, nitro, supercharger, turbo. Like we love those type installs or gears or whatever, but nobody likes to do the little things that go along with it. And that's kind of what I'm trying to remind you guys of is don't forget and don't lose sight of all those little things. If you can go out and do those first before you're taking on this massive project, I think it's going to be a lot easier for you. This is the way, see, I, I know how I am. That's why I do things like this. Because if we slap this supercharger on the car and we don't have the wide band on it yet, guess what? Oh yeah, your boy's going down the road. Well, I'm going down the road on it. So <laughs> it's just the way it is. So it's best to go ahead and have that done first because I really don't want to blow this thing up. Stay passionate, stay motivated, get out here, get after it, get some work done. I know it's getting cold for a lot of you guys. So this is the perfect time to kind of get in your garage or wherever you're at and start doing some work. And uh, hey, before you know it, spring will be here and you're gonna want all this stuff done, right? Car shows are gonna start coming up, events, for takeover will be one of the first ones that come up and you know i'm going to be there and i expect you guys to be there as well so get out there get ahead of the curve and let's start working on our cars i think that's pretty much going to wrap this up on the retro fox until we get the supercharger there's not much else that i need to do to it all right guys i'm going to go ahead wrap this video up and as always thanks for watching